Pancreas divisum is the most common congenital anatomic variant of the pancreas. It occurs in approximately 10% of patients. It is caused by failure of fusion of the ventral and dorsal ducts during embryogenesis. As a result, drainage occurs through the dorsal gland via the minor papilla. In pancreas divisum, the dominant drainage occurs through the minor papilla rather than the major. The ventral pancreas, shaded in blue, has a hypoechoic texture with EUFs. In a normal pancreas, the main pancreatic duct can be followed into the more echogenic dorsal gland. Many consider pancreas divisum to be a cause of recurrent acute pancreatitis due to poor drainage at the minor papilla. Linear EUS has been shown to have a high accuracy in diagnosis. EUS identification of divisum may be important prior to ERCP for ampulectomy or sphincter of OD manometry. Suggested EUS criteria for diagnosis of divisum include inability to follow the main PD from the major ampulla to the body of the pancreas or inability to follow the main PD across the sonographic border from the ventral to dorsal pancreas. normal pancreas anatomy. From the second duodenum, we see the darker texture of the ventral pancreas with the bile duct and the pancreatic duct emerging from the ampulla. The CBD should always emerge above the PD in this view. We can follow the main PD into the brighter dorsal pancreas. It may be difficult to follow the main PD continuously into the body of the pancreas in this view. From the duodenal bulb, we are demonstrating the bile duct above the pancreatic duct, which is termed stack sign. The CBD and the PD then merge at the ampulla. The PD is followed around the portal vein confluence into the more echogenic pancreas body. These findings allow us to rule out divisum. Now we can follow the PD back into the ampulla. We will review three cases of pancreas divisum. Case number one, a 64-year-old female with history of pancreatitis. An MRI MRCP showed an irregular area with calcifications in the head and uncinate of the pancreas. Pancreas divisum was incidentally noted. The main PD is seen terminating at the minor papilla. We follow the CBD, which terminates at the major papilla, suggesting divisum. We also see this irregular calcified area in the head of the pancreas. From the second portion of the duodenum, we see the CBD emerging above the PD. However, we are not able to follow the pancreatic duct, which is terminating in this irregular heterogeneous area with focal calcifications. As we move toward the body of the pancreas, we notice the main pancreatic duct emerge from the minor papilla. 
We follow the PD past the portal vein into the body of the pancreas, identifying pancreas divisa. From the duodenal bulb, we see our stack sign. This does not rule out divisum. The main PD emerges from the minor papilla rather than the major. We follow the PD around the portal vein into the pancreas body. We follow the PD back into the minor, confirming pancreas divisum. Case number two, a 55-year-old female with chronic intermittent right upper quadrant pain. EUS is performed prior to ERCP for sphincter of OD manometry. From the second duodenum, we can see the PD emerging above the CBD, which is a clue to the presence of divisum. We can follow the main PD around the portal vein into the body of the pancreas. From the duodenal bulb, we see the PD above the CBD, which is the opposite of the normal stack sign. This suggests divisum. The PD emerges from the minor and crosses the border into the more echogenic dorsal pancreas. We are following the PD around the portal vein and into the pancreas body and back to the minor papilla, suggesting divisum. Subsequently, ERCP with cannulation of the minor papilla demonstrated the main pancreatic duct, confirming divisum. Case number three, a 50-year-old female with abdominal pain and abnormal LFTs. An MRI demonstrated a 1.5 centimeter cystic structure adjacent to the distal CBD with debris, likely a diverticulum. Pancreas divisum was incidentally noted. Here we follow the PD from the body into the minor papilla. The bile duct terminates in the major papilla and we see a duodenal diverticulum. From the duodenal bulb, we follow the CBD into the major papilla, which is obscured by a diverticulum with debris. As we follow the CBD out of the major, we see the PD below it. By following the PD, we can see that it has originated from the minor papilla and has bypassed the major toward the dorsal pancreas, confirming pancreas divisum. Pancreas divisum can be excluded by following the pancreatic duct from the major ampulla to the body of the pancreas across the sonographic border from the ventral to dorsal pancreas. Clues to diagnosing divisum. The main PD may emerge above the CBD, or the PD may be seen entering the minor papilla. We recommend that the presence or absence of pancreas divisum be reported with every EUS performed for pancreatic or biliary indications. A careful examination is necessary in idiopathic pancreatitis, chronic pancreatitis, unexplained epigastric pain, dilated main PD seen on imaging, before intended ERCP, and when there is a termination in the main PD in the head of the pancreas on ERCP to differentiate between divisum and neoplastic obstruction.
The EUS offers advantages over other imaging modalities. It is less invasive than ERCP and allows the ability to visualize the ampulla and perform FNA, enabling exclusion of pseudodivisum. In conclusion, linear array endoscopic ultrasound is a valuable tool in the diagnosis of pancreas divisum.